Welcome to the Keen on Yoga podcast, bringing you the stories of many people who in various ways are attempting to walk the path of yoga. Our intention is to inspire your own practice and commitment to yoga beyond the mat and in all areas of life. We consider this an offering, a service to the community and labour of love. If you feel inclined, any donations are appreciated, just visit our page and click the donate button at www.keenonyoga.co.uk forward slash podcast. I hope you enjoy the show. Our guest today is David Garig on the Keenon Yoga podcast. David is an internationally recognised yoga teacher and creator of the Asana Kitchen video instruction series. One of the first of its kind online, highly informative as well as stylistic. David writes passionately and eloquently on the subject of yoga and he has authored numerous articles as well as three books, The Value City, The King of Asanas and Maps and Musings. He travels internationally and presents yoga in his own unique, honest and inspirational way. It's no cliche to say that David teaches from the heart. For almost 30 years, David has maintained an enthusiastic personal practice dedicated to the asana and pranayama tradition of Ashtanga Yoga. David is amongst a small group of Ashtanga Yoga teachers to receive directly certification from the late Batabi Joyce. He met Batabi Joyce in 1993 and travelled over the next 16 years to study yoga more or less annually with him. During some of these trips, David has also studied the tradition of classical Indian vocal music, subsequently recording two highly energetic curtain CDs. He remains passionate about music as well as the bhakti element of yoga in his practice. His mission as a teacher is to help individuals apply the teachings of Ashtanga Yoga so as to promote physical, psychological and emotional growth in themselves, he says. You can find David at www.davidgarigas.com or on Instagram at David Garigas Yoga. I'm here today, uh, very excited to introduce David Garig. Um, he's been practicing yoga, I think, since 16 years old. And he's very well known for Sanskrit chanting and uh, the kirtan, uh, the music. I think I kind of always wanted to ask you, what did you did you perform? It, uh, you were performing as a, as a punk musician in Seattle before you were teaching, or how did that come about? Um, yeah, I, d- I did that. I am as a I was a part of that uh, underground music scene in Seattle in the early '80s, right. and um, I picked up the bass and um, so that, I was yeah singing singing as well. Or just no, no, no that, that was the thing is um, I was terrified of, as of singing, and in fact I. I was in community college and I, I joined the choir and some friends of mine came to the performance and um, they said they never heard my voice once because <laughs> I was I was very scared uh, of my voice. In fact, it, it was kind of amazing that I started singing at all. Um, it was all, like, uh, and it was through India. Uh, right. Cause and I didn't, I started off um, wanting to learn Indian music, so I was playing the tabla, the drums. But I, I have, a, from skateboarding, I have a damaged finger. Right. And, and it's a really key one for playing the tabla. Uh-huh. So my, um, my tabla teacher, I had, uh, he, he worked with this singer. And so I, I ended up um, playing, pra- being a, uh, the singer, he would use me as his drummer to practice. And, um, and he, he was an amazing singer and he was a teacher and he, he got really fed up with my sound because my finger was messed up. And he just, he just finally, he said, no more tabla, you, you, you're gonna sing. Right. He, he sort of forced me to start singing. And, um, and so I totally got into it. Yeah. And, uh, and then I started doing those kirtans and stuff um, and with my, in Mysore. So, oh, that so, was so in Mysore, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We would go. We would do them in these weird houses. Like people would just pack into these small spaces, and that was really that fun. Was happening when I was there as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, but it, and then I also used to do them when I taught workshops and things. And um, I, I built a soundproof room for myself. And 
and that's where I really learned to sing. Or I mean, sort of. I, I never okay. was convinced. Right. <laughs> I, was just, I mean, I could. I should. Pre- I should build one of them for my wife. She's kind of. She's kind of tone there. That would. That. <laughs> I, I would. Maybe you could come and help me. <laughs> but, but let's backtrack a minute and just uh, introduce everyone to how how you uh, you know your history with yoga, how you got into. Well, like, you're, you've got an interesting story. I mean, I remember hearing you years ago saying how you got into the asana was through running, I think, or they had an interesting background. Um, you got into hatha yoga and then how you get into ashtanga. Just run us through that a bit. Because it's, it's kind yeah, of well, Yeah. I, um, I just by chance learned the sun salutation when I was in high school. And so I did that actually by myself um, outside yep. for many years. Just yeah. without any formal instruction, and just and but then it was running. I started running um, kind of competitively for for a while, and it and that, that got me to a yoga class finally, and um, and that was stretch out. What's that? Just to stretch out, you know, you know, kind of in yeah, just to stretch yeah. out. Yeah, oh, yeah. I used to run to my yoga class, but soon I started loving the yoga. Like yeah. the whole thing, and so I, uh, and that was it. I started with Iyengar yoga, actually, right. and I think that informs. I mean, I, I kind of get the feeling that it kind of informs your perspective on on the Ashtanga, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, long stances. I mean, you're, one thing I always notice is the trick and asanas are quite long, and you know, like definitely more Iyengar insp- inspired, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and. Definitely, just how I think about the the postures and um, right. It definitely, get is influenced from by Iyengar, but also what you also mentioned Hatha Yoga because I had another teacher um, that was I don't know what to call her, but Hatha Yoga is probably better. Right, she's a, a master, amazing woman, and she she really influenced me, and and she was very different than. Iyengar yoga and very different than Ashtanga. Mm. And so um, and she was way more into like the whole process of getting into a pose, so, like vinyasa, but but oh. a, a deep study of vinyasa. Like she, mm. to the point where she almost never held a pose. She was always like, how, how are you getting there? And, um, and so that, that definitely informed both of those things the Iyengar where you're paying attention to being in the pose and like activating your body yeah uh, much more slower and more static and then this woman Marie how she was just so into transitions and then that with Ashtanga which is such a flow and got so many got the the breathing the bandhas yeah and this whole sequencing and so it's so a kind that, of natural, a natural kind of a natural meeting when you finally got into the Ashtanga. It seemed like a kind of natural synthesis of everything you'd come up to that point, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and then it took like years and years to kind of to, I don't know come upon or really figure out how I wanted to teach it or how mm-hmm. I like it. and and it but it, and it's tricky. Because mm-hmm. Ashtanga is so, so on the go. There's so much happening, mm-hmm. and that. But and but I'm trying to like bring consciousness to to every transition and and really activate in the poses, and um, yeah. So it's how did you get into the Ashtanga? Who was your introduction to Ashtanga, and how did that happen? Well, the. Um, I I found a video. I was going to this woman, uh, Marie Svoboda. Uh, the, uh, yeah, I read about her. Yeah, yeah she seemed like yeah. quite a teacher. I, I got a video of Patavi Joyce teaching in her one of her classes, and I I just fell in love with it. I, I thought it was yeah. totally amazing. Yeah. And then he came to America, and that was in 93. And right. um, I went down from Seattle to L.A. for one month and studied with him that was my introduction to ashtanga you know for, you know for a whole month for a whole month did lead primary with patavi joyce 
as my, I'd never done it. I, and wow. I, it was, I was terrified. I was absolutely petrified. Where was I, that? Who was, who was hosting who was that? that? Um, Chuck Miller and Monty, the, in Yo yeah. Yoga Works in Santa right. Monica. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so. How did you find that? What was that? How did you find that? How was that? How was your experience when you were down? How was it? Oh, I was totally blown away. I mean, like, I never experienced yoga like like that. And, and back then, it there was way less uh, vinyasa yoga and almost no ashtanga yoga. Yeah. And so it just blew my world, like, completely. And I was such a, I was just so earnest so serious and uh, about yoga and, and in in physical in a physical way it was a very physical kind of way because of my i have a, a skateboarding background and the, it's just very kind of somatic person and so this was just so intense like the never seen anything like it the amount of strength and flexibility and kind of trust and flow and uh and yeah i just i've spent the month in heaven i, I in fact i even um adam you so i did i camped um while i was there up, right. in, up in this canyon and in the after so i had didn't have a home to go home to or a hotel or anything right when i would yeah. after the class and so i did i went to the park every day and did the whole thing again uh, like and i had never done it before so I, I just totally dived into it and was just enraptured and i actually went to maui um one he went down to encinitas after la yeah. and went over to maui and i followed him to maui and i was so nuts about it that i so i asked to do second series when i was when he went to Maui, there was a lead second. Yeah. Yeah. After one, after I had done it for, done it for primary for a month and then, and then a month passed where I went home and did it. So he, yeah, so let you. <laughs> he goes, well, he goes, I, he said, I'm looking your practice. And so he, I, he definitely didn't look at my practice, but I bothered him again. And he said, okay, no problem. You come. And so <laughs> I came to that, um, Second series, and I, I don't know how I survived. Yeah. But I, I survived all the way up to Ekapada Shashasana. And then, you know, I couldn't even come close to putting my leg behind my head. I was pretty stiff. And, um, and so he stood in front of me, and I thought he was going to, like, adjust me, because that's what I saw in the videos. I thought he was going to, like, help me put my leg behind the head. But he just stared there in front of me and watched me just flounder, and then he goes, you bad man, long time primary you do. And that was the end of that. It's <laughs> <laughs> not like a question of um, be careful what you ask for. Um, <laughs> oftentimes yeah. people are asking for the lead second, and then, you know, um, that, that doesn't pan out so good. <laughs> that doesn't turn out so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I asked not to do it many times. Um, in my soul. So, and then also, I, um, you know, I didn't have any plan to go to India. That that was definitely not. How are you affording this? What was your background like financially, and like what were you working at? If that's not. Like, yeah, no, I was a waiter. I had yeah, almost. I so, yeah. Yeah. I was and, um, it just to say, but because I think that was the case right at that time. I mean, what you touched upon, David, is it was very different times. I mean, like both of us came to yoga. Like, well, you a lot before me, but me twenty years ago when. There was no vinyasa options. There was no soft serve, you know. I mean, if we're going to call it that, you know, it was just like well, you came from this Iyengar, which is a static form and it's very nice and I think very enjoyable. But then suddenly you got this other thing that's just like it does blow your mind. Yeah, it did, right? And then you're camping and then you just got, you know, like we haven't got like the money. So you just try to save a few pennies to get, you know, to do this. It was, it was so exciting, really. I yeah. mean, it really was, yeah. And so, and I, I, yeah, I went, I somehow went to India, you know, like that was a, that was huge for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, no internet, no, uh, you know, knowledge of what's going to happen when you get there, where you're going to stay or, right. Yeah. Just write this letter. 
it was, and then uh, f fell in love with India too, uh, totally as a place and the people and. And you went to Mysore, right? You went to Mysore first. Yeah, you went no, to Mysore, right. right to Mysore. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I often find that there's a case where people say, "Well, how's India?" And you say, "Well, honestly, I don't know that much outside Mysore. I mean, I know a little bit of the south, but." It's kind of a blink. It's kind of you know my, a slightly myopic take on India that I have, right? <laughs> right, right. I know. I was amazed how many times I went there and didn't travel really because of yeah. that. Right. And so obviously the scene, yeah. Like I mean, you know, when you started, it was a long time ago, and the scene has changed, and so much. You know, now yoga has become a huge success everywhere. You know, and it's marketable and it's a thing out there, right? With so many types. I mean. How, have your approach to it changed and, and or how have you changed to now the fact that yoga is, you know, is a commodity? Because, I mean, I don't know, like, I don't really think that I expected to make money out of teaching. I was a cook, right? Like, that's how I made my money. And I probably imagine you didn't really assume that you were going to be a yoga teacher as a profession, in inverted commas. Like, so how's, how's that all gone for you? You know, how do you keep your integrity now with it? No, like, no it, so... Funny story is that with that certificate, um, you know, Dobby Joyce wanted me and my wife to have this certificate, but we weren't even going to take it. And this this um, one man, this Spanish man that was there with us, he just he got the application for us. He goes, "You have to get this certificate. Like this is going to be like super important, you know." And so, yes, I I was not thinking of teaching and. Um, and, but to me, I'll tell you, almost, I don't know, it's, I feel it's been, it's very positive for me as a person, the everything, the, the, I, or just because it's forced me, like all the, I mean, sometimes I have trouble with the, the fact that it's business or that there's business involved. There's, mm. and mm. that's, there's, there's challenges with, yoga and business as yeah. a combination. I mean, it's strange but, to get someone caring and then take money for it. But then again, like, on the other hand, it, it is your livelihood. And if you didn't have that, then you couldn't provide it in the same, you know, to the same degree. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel that the knowledge that I have gained and, and how powerful yoga is, even on a physical level, let alone the other levels, it... Mm -hmm. it, it I mean, I have at least as much knowledge as a doctor or a lawyer, and you know they get paid for what they do, and um, and so I, I'm okay with it. And mm. and also though it it it's definitely like the whole. It's made me. It's disciplined me in a really good way. Do you know, like, because. And I've had my partner, Joy, has been an amazing help to me in, in it because like, so I used to keep journals. I'll just give you an example of writing things about, about yeah, yoga. Yeah, and, yeah, and to me, it was, very, yeah. um, it was a very private thing, a very uh, non-commercial thing, right. like just for me and like, and spontaneous in a way, you know, but, and then, um, but, but also like serious ideas were in in those journals and um and like joy she she used to go and take the journal and then like take a piece and write it and we'd put put it online and that was like terrifying to me you know really and right. and yet like the, the i want to share those ideas right that that's like yeah. partly teaching is is mm. spreading something and giving it to somebody else, something really powerful and and beneficial to them, and so, like, in, in many ways, it's made me overcome fear, mm -hmm. you know, like an inhibition and shyness, and right. and also just laziness and um, dis being disorganized, and mm -hmm. so putting things together and really being able to present something that somebody can receive and benefit from, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think organization is like a huge skill that's underrated, right? Like, because like, yeah. I, I often kind of identify with you because you, I think you have a quite a, 
kind of spider-like way of thinking, right? Like I can see your journals and I have a similar, um, uh, for good and for bad, kind of propensity of my thinking and, and to order it and to organize it. I mean, again, it's usually the woman behind that, like my <laughs> reason who really helps me organize this stuff because otherwise it's rather tangential. I go one way and then the other way. And by the end of the workshop, they could end up with a, a lot of very varied kind of possible, possible directions, you know? Yeah. Um, Put it in a way that people can receive it. And it is frightening, isn't it? I mean, because in order to really be any kind of teacher worthwhile, you have to put yourself out there. And yeah. you can take that anyway or do with it with anything that they want with that, you know, which is is very frightening. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so the fact that it has to be so formalized as, as a business, in that sense, it's very positive. Gets you to get it together. And also, I, I don't know, I feel fortunate in that I still, it still all comes from when I practice. I really do value all the things that I teach and that, that those are very true, very, it's very true to, for me. Mm. And so I'm, so really I'm sharing what, what's true for me. Yeah. And what, what, what I mean, everyone's obviously going to ask the literal questions. I mean, what does what does the practice look for you these like these days? And you know, and how you know how has it evolved? And this is inevitably as you get older. I'm past forty now. You're a couple of years older. You know, how does that 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 transition I'm, is is really interesting, right? Yeah, as you get older, I'm, yeah. I'm fifty eight. Wow. And no, and it's dramatically changed and changing. And I mean, I, for me, I, I feel like the, the Ashtanga in its pure sense is the template and, and that, and it's, it's the, the whole foundation for everything. Mm. And, but, but I have that foundation. And so now I, I'm much more free to practice to use that foundation, that template in a lot of different ways. So I, right. and I don't, so my practice is very individual now. And I, I practice much fewer postures. I do, I stay in postures longer. Um, I, but I, and. So is that, I mean, that is an interesting topic because essentially I kind of see it as a training ground, right? Like, and you learn the form and you learn the, the kind of verse, you know, or, or, you know, the how to read music. But then in the end, what would your perspective be? Should there be a graduation to just yoga in the most generalized terms? As yeah. a specialist, you then become a non-specialist in a way, like, you know? Yeah, like to me, I, 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 the way I put it is like, so the, there's, there's a yoga, the, yoga is a big word. Yeah. And there, there's Hatha yoga that's, comes that narrows the word or narrows the focus. And then there's Ashtanga yoga that mer- narrows the focus. Right. So you're, so you're trying to learn from, by doing Ashtanga, you're trying to t- learn Hatha yoga. And then from Hatha yoga, you're trying to learn yoga. Wow. And, nice. yeah. and so that, and at first you, you can't start by yoga. You can't even start with Hatha yoga. You got to start with Ashtanga yoga, like something mm. so structured, so mm. disciplined, so mm. clear, what you do, and then you got to do that for a long time. And like a musician, like you can't do it without your scales, without really knowing your instrument, right? And but then eventually you know your instrument and you you learn the basics, and then you but you even go beyond the basics because then you do what you want, right? Mm-hmm. Like and because yoga is it's the str- the biggest paradox in yoga adam is is the fact that you discover it by yourself and that, that even the word that one one of the words that describes uh, the 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 ultimate state of yoga like realization or enlightenment is is kaivalya yeah right? yeah it means but- it means the aloneness of yeah. seeing mm. okay mm. so it, it means that you f- Fully individuate. You you become the 
totally unique being on this planet that you were meant to be. But in that, and the paradox of it is, that's what gives you the feeling that everything's interconnected and everyone's unified. So at some point, it's there a schism? Because essentially you're talking about, yeah, the, like with Cavalli, you're talking about a conviction in your own self, right? Like a, yeah. a respect and understanding of your ability and authority to know, you know, or to, you know, to live your life as it feels right, right? But how do you graduate from being taught and a structure and a teacher towards the goal, which is, yes, a subjective trust and a conviction for being that you're talking about, right? Yeah, well, I mean, you graduate to me by staying with it and being <laughs> very, as like, just clear, actually it goes in arcs. There's a devotion and commitment and sacrifice. But, but you ride those, uh, those waves, the, the, the ebbs and the flows to the best of your ability. So like sometimes you're, the devotion or the sacrifice, it's easier and you, 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 you feel motivated for commitment. And, and so you, you take advantage of those times. And then when that wanes, when there's less motivation, then you, you still ride with it to the best of your ability. And you keep doing that. You just keep riding with it and riding with it to the best of your ability. And when some years pass by, you graduate. It happens. Right. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and really, you know, and I, I don't know if I should quote this, this guy, but I will. Cause it, but the guy, you know, I don't know. In England, you may not follow American football, but right. Tom Brady is like the right. greatest quarterback ever. <laughs> but you know what he says? Like, and I don't even know how much I respect him, but I respect certain things about him. But he said this, that what drives him is love of his subject. Right. And that, that I can relate to. It's, it's basically... You, if you love that subject, you love yoga, you will discover it. Indeed, it's, it's an obvious question I'm going to ask, but it just comes to my head. I mean, that's it. Can you, could you put your finger on what, or what that means to you in a couple? I mean, what, what do you love about yoga? It sounds so obvious. But I know. Well, this is the thing. Is it? It, yeah, it's very what specific, I, actually. <laughs> Super question. And I love asanas. <laughs> Me, I like, so this quarantine, you know, it's, right. it's, it's a nightmare in so many ways. But in some ways, like, I, I've spent three or four hours a day down in my cave doing postures. And, and it's, it doesn't matter to me, like, what, limits are there like mm. i it's like i love don dasana <laughs> right i like all of it i like doing tree pose i like and and i really do that and so it's it's very um and, what and i like but it's not like um another sport because yoga is the, the, the asanas are internal so there's breathing, there's yeah. a, you, you seal off your awareness, so you go inside your body. So, and you're really, it's a communion uh, with yourself. Okay, so, so they're like, with what is happening inside you. But, but, and, but then it's, it's be, but you are part of the entirety. Like you're, you are, so that, that you're not separate from everything else. You're part of it. So when you commune with yourself, especially in a very profound and kind of sustained way, then you, you commune with everything. Mm. And how this you, is how what, you get there. Because, I mean, many people often ask me, well, how do I have, the, I mean, what you're, you know, kind of experiencing or, you know, expostulating is, is, Yoga is equanimity, you know, as is taught in the Bhagavad Gita, right? But, I mean, how do you get there from Ashtanga Yoga, which kind of suggests this very linear march towards development and progress? And, and you're not talking about that. And often people say 
well, how do I get that, what you're talking about, when I'm so bound up in wanting to get Kapitasana or once you've done Kapitasana, you know, blah, 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 right? Like, Right, right. How, I mean, and I think, I well, imagine you would have had this at the start. I certainly had this. How, how does that evolve? Right, well, but the thing is, is so, so you, that's a tough one, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, when, because hey, you can't do some, I mean, like, like you have to well, accept. You I can't, mean, yeah, you can't because, do well, you, so, I mean, sometimes, yeah, there's, <laughs> it's a funny, it's cracking me up actually, because, because at some point, like, for one, you decide what represents challenge to you, right? And, um, and, you need challenge so that Kapotasana is super challenge. Like it, it, for most people, some people mm-hmm. it's not, but, mm-hmm. but for most people it's, it, it brings up aversion and dread and like you, and uh, fear and sure. these things. And mm-hmm. so, but this is a big part of uh, turning inward. Right. And it is because, because if you look at what what stops us from turning inward is those very things. It's like the fear of what is inside of us: fear of our desires, fear of our anger, fear yeah. of uh, mm-hmm. fear of failing. There's so many things about ourselves that we don't want to see, right. and we pretend like don't exist or avoid. Okay, and and so. So that's why you can't start. You can't just sit down and withdraw and then really you'll distract yourself somehow, right? And so so this is why Ashtanga is so potent is because it it basically sort of forces you to look at your shadow. It forces you to see your frustration and your fear and the the all kinds of things like it's basically like your shadow and and you could see and this is the part i was laughing about though adam is that so we either like get better at seeing our shadow and thus and therefore don't need the same kind of challenge to see it mm-hmm. yeah later mm-hmm. yeah. or we or we're just fooling ourselves, just getting old and <laughs> fooling ourselves, right? That because well, chasing it. I mean, I think there's a lot of people because I think what you're kind of touching on is the way you you know you can project all those things on a posture, right? Like it 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 can kind of symbolize all those fears and and a sense of. I mean, I kind of a student recently was telling me how she used to come to Karundavasana and, and start shaking, right? Like and you know, it became such a big deal, you know, a huge thing. And, and it was as if all the fear and all the sense of uh, lack of uh, uh, value or, you know, insufficiency seems to be projected on that posture as the doorway to it, right? Yeah. But it's all too easy to keep either just push against that doorway and to try and avoid it in a way or just keep chasing. And then you get past that and then another thing takes the, you know, takes that place, right? I mean... But you get better at it though too right. you get better right. at, at you get better at seeing when you're going to avoid something right. or mm. or when you're getting attached to something yeah and you're you're able to pull out of it with more skill at, hopefully <laughs> right that that's and so so you don't need the, the well and also it's it's just part of life Okay, so like me, I can't do, it's partly like, it's more, here's the thing, Adam. To me, it's more like making the best of what you have. Okay, and um, and so my body at 58, even if I take care of myself, and it's not the same as 38. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's just not, and and it's not supposed to be. So I can't do the same things that I could do. And I might do... I might be doing them if I could, yeah. but instead uh, there's a certain um, intelligence that comes and a uh, protection. Like now I'll protect my body because I know what I, I know 
that I, I have a motto that's, ta- I say it's taken me 35 years to actually start to live up to, which is first do no harm. That's the physician's creed, yeah. right? And, and it means, and what that means is when I, I want to leave my mat either the same or better than yeah. I left. Yeah. Not, not even one little bit worse. <laughs> right and but what we'll do is we the ego gets involved or our desires or uh, different things and then we go we push too far do this or that and end up worse off than we started hurting wow. ourselves or straining i remember and, I, I heard this i sorry to interrupt you but i remember i just got to bring in this story that i actually read about um i think you posted years ago you you decided you wanted to start surfing right and so yeah Somewhere like an island to surf, and then I think you after a couple of days you did yourself in like the, the surfing or the yoga, and then you couldn't surf at all, right? Or maybe you couldn't I even couldn't do yoga or surf. Yeah, yeah, you were stuck. I could only yeah, yeah, and and I so mean, it's a good motto there, right? Because I think just to kind of bring that into something sensible, I mean, it seems like people can sacrifice. I mean, should life be sacrificed for yoga or? the other way around, you know, how do we synthesize the two things, right? Like you stopped, I think you decided at that point that you weren't going to do extra things, you know, like you weren't going to limit your yoga practice for life in a way. But is that limiting then? Is that to limit yourself in life or how do you It's a choice. But me, I I tell you, I, it's a choice I'm willing to make. I, I, I am. And I, I don't, I don't feel I mean, you can't, I I love that uh, Kurosawa, amazing filmmaker of Samurai Samurai and all, like one of the legends. He was also, he wanted to be an artist, not a filmmaker, but he found his talent was in filmmaking and he made the statement, like, you can't have it everything. You know, you, and, and so it's just part of it. You're, yes, by choosing to go deep into Hatha yoga, I miss out on so many other parts of life. Right. But, but also, I, I get entrance into parts of life that I would not get. And I mean, it's one of the things I'm most thankful for, actually, that I, the focus that I have and that, that has, like I said, there, there's ebbs and flows, but for but I've stayed with it, and you I feel have, yeah. that I st- I'm reaping the benefits of that. And mm-hmm. there's more; it's not finished yet. Uh-huh. And um, and I really feel that this is a cr- uh, like when I look at people I admire in their various disciplines, it's the it's the one thing, it's one factor that. I see transfers everywhere. Right. It's the ones that are passionate about their thing. Mm. That, 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 that's what leads them to yeah. excel and to really discover and fully develop. I guess, isn't it? It's a What's degree that? of a degree of focus. Like so maybe like I'm thinking about one of maybe your more eminent countrymen, like Walt Whit- Whitman, who said, seeing everything in a blade of grass or seeing infinity, right? Like that. Yeah. Everything and comes down to the same principle, which is concentration and beyond concentration. Yeah. And so, and I'll just give you, like me, I don't want to be a kind of an okay surfer and an okay yogi and an okay singer. And, you know, like it's just, that's not how I want to do it. I want to be like, I want to go for it in one area and like yeah. Yeah. really develop that. Like that, it's a definite choice. And when you're saying the yoga keeps yielding you the benefits and it's giving more, I mean, can you say a bit about that? To what, what, you know, what are the benefits? Like, where did you come from, and and what has it given you? Had you not, had you been the David who carried on with the base and the, you know. Now for running yoga, marathon running and bass playing. Yeah. And where would you be at? I mean, what's it given you that, that you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have gotten otherwise? Well, it's given... Um, um, I'll tell you the, the main thing it's given me, actually. Okay. I feel like. 
Yeah. Two, two things. One, it's given me um, a way to share with the world. You know, like, yeah. I'm going to read you this poem. Uh-huh. This is a, it's, it's a little, this, for me, th these are intimate. They're challenging. Um, yeah. But it says, I, I put it this way. God made me eccentric, odd, a loner. A and there are challenges and gifts that come with these qualities. Okay, and, and to offset the challenges, God also made me a servant of people. And so it's, it's a greatest gift to have, to be of use, and to have a connection point um, with others, even though I am so odd, right? And, and it's saying that, um, and it's not my doing that people benefit from um, what I have to share or say. Um, I can only marvel at it and be thankful because otherwise I would be very lonely and cast adrift on the dark, lonely sea without any friends. <laughs> well, See, that's, that is yeah. really, that's, that's pretty touching and it's pretty honest. Um, yeah. I yeah, actually, so yeah, but, I just and so and then the, people's experience in the Ashtanga camp, I think. And uh, then there's one piece before that that yeah. that's because it's also made me be able to befriend myself. See, those are the gifts. The gift I I'm friends with myself. Oh my god, mm. right? Yeah, like and and so because you can be your own worst enemy. You can yeah. tear yourself down, yeah. but but yoga's taught me how to be a friend to myself and to love myself, and then it's also given me this place to share in the world. And how does it do that? How how does it how does it do that? I mean, just to trying to pin down that term a bit. How does it teach you acceptance of of yourself? Well, just because. I can go down there where in and spend three hours with myself wow. just inside processing. You couldn't have done I, that without the asana, you don't think. What's that? You couldn't have done that without the asana or through music or something, you know? Is that the same process that people find? Well, that's what I love about yoga. It's so purely what it is. It's there's no there's no thing. You, you, it's not a music. You're not making a song. You're not making a movie. You're not building something it's you it's just you being with yourself that's all <laughs> yeah so there's no escape yeah yeah it's just so root it's the root of being a human being yeah 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 it's, it's pretty pared down yeah um do you think the philosophy of yoga is necessary I mean, like, I mean, it's like you've got this very, very basic rudimental system that, you know, on the Ashtanga that most of our listeners will be practicing, you know. I mean, there's, I mean, you say it's complicated, but at the end of the day, like, I mean, it's pretty structured. And, you know, like, I mean, do you, how is, I mean, I know you're interested in the philosophy outside it. Like, how has that informed the yoga practice? Is it necessary to read that philosophy or not? <laughs> um, I mean, I love the Patavi Joyce ratio, the percentage, right? Uh -huh. Okay. One percent. So, right. like, and, and but that. So, so one time, you know, like, I was. I've always been a rebel or a little troublemaker, you know. And so I asked him in a conference. I said, "But okay, so one percent theory. Then which, which theory? Which one percent?" And he he didn't like that. He was like, no. "Bad man," <laughs> you know, and. <laughs> But you, so, read, you read a lot outside, you know, you, you know a lot, you know. Of the yeah, but the, see, the, for one, I love this statement. I use this a lot, is that it's, it, and it puts it in harsh terms, the Bhagavad Gita. It says that only a simpleton thinks that the discipline and the philosophy are two separate things. But the learned know that the discipline and the philosophy are the same. And so... So that's why it's 99% practice, because your, the, your philosophy 
it comes through how you practice. It's like, right. it's right there. You can't separate them. And so, but so the, but the 1% then, because it's not 100% practice. No, it's 1% theory. So it's good to, to have some little seed, little kernel of an idea of like, what is this all about? And then you can start to see, and that 1% really will infiltrate your method. Like how you go about things and why you go about things. And then, but so, and if you reverse it, if you go to 99% theory, if you're just thinking about something, then you can't learn it. You don't experience it. And so, so you got to get the proportion right where it's mostly about practice and experiential. Do you get inherently, do you get an attitude coming through practice just by practice alone. I mean, you know that Batavi Joyce, one of his favorite quotes from the Yoga Sutras was that, you know, yoga practice, a part of practice over a long period of time, you know, consistently. Yeah. The right attitude is the um, firmly grounded, right? That, that, you know, one of these, uh, but this, I mean, okay, like consistently we do that, you know, like, uh, yeah, like uh, over a long time where we've done that, you know, but is it inherent? Is it necessary? necessarily the case you get the right attitude because i mean you can easily see and i i wouldn't want to be judgmental but it's it, it can seem like it can be a distraction and a kind of body infatuation this practice right you get stronger you're feeling pretty good you're looking pretty strong and you can do stuff that you know other people can't it can it lead you down the wrong path if you don't check yourself or does the right attitude somehow pop out you know the, well it, if you stay with it long enough the right attitude pops pops out but right. there is that that sutra it's got the consistency over a long time dear dear gakala long time right and so those those lesser reasons they they get filtered out eventually but and some people sooner than others and some are, some of us are very stubborn and so it can take decades but isn't that what the, the other series is there for, right? <laughs> After primary yeah. series, the series are there just for those that haven't got the message already. You know, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and, and but Adam, it, it, you the thing is, is that it takes a long time for that philosophy to emerge through the practice. Okay, it's it, it's not necessarily an immediate or short-term thing like if you, like you know getting flexible is pretty short you can practice yeah. and gain strength right how, how do you practice? encourage people to continue for the long period of time what's that how do you encourage people to stick at it long enough that they find it out for themselves right this is this is the question i often find myself asking you know you know that if they carried on in the end they would sort it out you know they would get to that place but you know, then they get, they, after a year or two, they fall out of love with it. They're going to get injured. They don't feel they're making any progress. And you just kind of think, I wish I could somehow help you to stay know, on. You know? like, I've given how, up on that. Have you got any tips for how to, no, I mean, if I've given simple, up on that. How, how would you do, encourage someone to keep at it, you know, if they're feeling demoralized or they're injured or in pain, you know? <sighs> I mean, <laughs> To me, you uh, Sorry, it's a hard one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's really not. because I, I guess because, no one answer fits all people either. You know, everyone's an individual and every everyone can be kind of, you know, supported yeah. in, in different ways, right? Yeah. I mean and I I certainly work with my students in this because uh, and my whole teaching is crafted around this. And um, to, to a certain degree, if I really want to boil that down, for one, there's a couple of things. One is to re remember the benefits, okay, in a very um, specific way, like, and the benefits that you get, not the general benefits, but just tr try to um, quantify what you actually gain by doing yoga. 
like, and even to the point of writing it down, like, you know, I, I'm feel stronger. My mind, I focus more, whatever it is. And, um, and then the other is, so, so, but that's one way to keep practicing is not to forget to remember the benefits. Okay. And then when you don't want to do it, well, you're not going to get those benefits if you don't do it. Okay. And number two, it's this whole idea of love of the subject. And I would, I'll put with that enjoyment. Okay. So it's very essential. You enjoy your practice to, right. to a certain degree. And of course there's, there's hardship to it and challenge. And like, um, it, my Indian friend, his, his father was an amazing man. I don't know if you met him in my sort of Ravi, the flute player. Right. Yeah. I've heard of him. I don't think I met him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, his father, I used to spend a lot of time with him and yeah. like he, he, he was tuned into my kirtans, like, and he would ask me like, how David, that's what he called me. David, how was your kirtan last night? And I've said, you know, I was trying to be all sort of casual. It's like, yeah, it was fun, Dinesh. And he goes, no. No, it is a more heavy weight. <laughs> so it's not just f enjoyment. You know, it's not like you're just trying to have fun. Yeah. It, but there is a certain enjoyment. Like, that. Yeah. it's not just, oh, I hate this. Yeah. That, that, and, and if you do, if, if what's not, it's what's stopping you from getting to your mat is that you hate what you do. Well, then you've got to change it. Right. What if, you, like, what if there was a couple of postures or, the, the, you know, what if there was a couple of postures or movements, you know, that, that were making it really like, a, a, you know, you dreaded it and making you want to stop? Could you take them out? Take them out. Really? Right. Okay. Yeah. Just especially when you're oh, in, a, in an ebb, when you're like not motivated or you're, okay. you're in a weak point, yeah. just simplify and go for what you enjoy more. Like, so make sure that you enjoy, remember the benefits and enjoy yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That's like, nice. and yeah. we can get so rigid with uh, yeah. the following the sequence and like it really radical. And, and even if it's like supposed to be good for you because you face the hard postures and you don't avoid difficulty, that can be overdone. You know, and so, and this, it's a long ride. And mm. so you've got to, be, you have to build in forgiveness into that mm. ride. And, and also learn to trust that if you, if you don't enjoy something, if, then there's something to that, you know, that, that you want to listen to yourself and trust yourself because that's partly what you're trying to build through doing yoga is to gain trust in yourself. And that's one of the benefits you get is you do learn, you learn independence and you learn yeah. to trust yourself. And yeah. so, so um, that's what I would say. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of people say that, that you know, that these days when you've got the option of the vinyasa, you know, it's like, well, you know, a vinyasa, you can get to change the postures, do a bit of what you want, you know, you've got the music there. I mean, what's the, I mean, what's the benefit of sticking more, trying to stick more stringently to the Ashtanga system, especially if it causes you some sufferance? I mean, the vinyasa, you can pick and choose what you fancy kind of oftentimes, right? Or, right. But the, the thing is, is Ashtanga is not, it, it's got, there, there's breathing that's involved in it. There's internal um, energy work with bandhas. It's it's a whole other practice than a vinyasa, and so it's just a choice. It's like you, you can, and also I don't really try very hard to keep people in the corral. Right. It's like. Go ahead, try out the vinyasa if that's what your heart is calling for. Go do it, but because, but, but there, but you can't have everything. Okay, there's you're giving up something when you go do that, and you're gaining something when you go when you stick with the ashtanga. And 
Oh. You don't get to raise your legs up and around and down the dog as much, it seems. From my very limited experience of vinyasa, there's a lot of raising the legs up and down the dog and the kind of half twist over, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You know the funny part you see everyone do on Instagram when they kind of like a you know downward dog that's been flipped over with one arm back, you know? It's like <laughs> to me is the essence right, yeah. of yeah, it's, Well no, but and that we can joke about it. But the well, thing is that the person that does Ostrongi, see, I'm amazed how much you know in a way, like I don't want to do that. Like I I don't need like a whole bunch of kind of innovative movement all the time in to, to rock my world like that. That's, it's not a high need for me. Like I, I like doing triangle and then doing side angle. And then I, I, I get what I want from that repetition. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so, I, I mean, I think people just, they have to find their own, um, groove their own thing that that turns them on and there's there's certainly an endless discovery within ashtanga and its groove and if you take to it you'll you'll go into that and benefit and i reckon that i could do another interview with you easily because you're really nice to talk to and really interesting i wanted though before we finish to just ask you, I've seen over the years, you've done, I mean, I was a cook, you know, I've seen you do a lot of cooking. I, I liked your folko, your japati, uh, puffing them up on the naked flame. I remember years ago seeing that and trying, I said, he does that and I try myself. I think I burned the thing to a cinder, but, you know, <laughs> everyone always cares so much about the diet. This is the question. If I ask any questions at the end of a workshop, they'll all, they, they, most of it will be on the food, you know, what, and it is important, I guess, you know, I mean, it's important in an ethical sense to me, I think to you, and it's important on a practice sense. Can you give a couple of little tips or structured ideas about food before we finish? And so I'll tell you that it's, it's another one of the side benefits of this terrible situation, pandemic, but yeah. like I'm in my house and, and I get my kitchen every day. That's my kitchen. And, and me, cooking is like, is part of the art to me. Like, and, and that, I, it's so central to me, right. is the, the cooking. And cooking like really good food uh, that's nourishing and supporting the yoga. For, and so I, um, my tips are to get into cooking and cooking that, is does that nourishes you so like not like learning how to make fettuccine alfredo or yeah. cheesecake or something but like i i me i i work on the art of pressure cooking brown rice and making like you mean to say uh, the pasta isn't as nutritious as brown rice what was that pasta isn't as nutritious as brown rice so, I mean, what, what, oh, I know exactly. And what, so, what's nutritious? What's nutritious? I mean, I was being facetious, really. What? what I mean, what, to me, what is no, I'm serious. Whole grains. That's you're the center. Macro, for me. You're into macrobiotics, right? You have a yeah. Macro, and, yeah. Kind of, yeah. I use macrobiotics is like my um, Ashtanga yoga template. Right. My, right. My cooking template is macrobiotics, even though I'm not a strict. Um, I don't strictly follow it. It's, it's the basis for which I cook, which yeah, I like, is I like whole grains are in the center and yeah. then um, vegetables and legumes and tofu are coming, are a little bit wider uh, in the, but they're also right in the center. Yeah. And then you go out from there with dairy and meat and fats and um, sweets and all these other things that we can consume. And so you're trying, I am trying to, to make the basis of my diet be right in the center. And, and cooking is part of that. It's, you, it's hard to do it if you don't cook it or you don't have somebody very knowledgeable cooking it for you. And 
Um, do you recommend I'm, cooking a ho home cooking? You recommend as an important, you know, aspect, right? As a practice, right? Like key. Uh, I think it's forgotten. I think it really it needs to be emphasized that that home cooking, although it might seem like you have to, you know, effort and you have to be at home, evidently, you know, it, if you're going to practice this, I think the diet and the home cooking and doing that for yourself and for others is is instrumental, right? Yeah, and you you said you're a cook, and and me too. I, I grew up um, cooking, and it, I'm thankful because it because it's it's a giant part of what happens on the mat, what you eat, and it, and especially over time. Okay, the the longer you practice, the older you get, the more what you put in your body, yeah. you feel it, and you and it it accumulates. Too that the habits that you have, they they have their result later. You reap the the reward or the the suffering. Right. And um, so, do you ever allow yourself to deviate, or are you very strict? I mean, you ever go off and have an ice cream or a burger, or uh, you know, I mean, what's yeah, your? I'm saying, I I, I mean, it, I definitely deviate some but what's your but I also find yes. that the older I get the less um possible that is okay. like and 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 it's partly from a practice point of view but it's also just from a David walking around during the day point of view like you really need to keep a clean diet to feel good and to stay um fit mm -hmm. And um, and it's yeah, you have to keep your digestive system awake. And so also, okay, listen, Adam. Yeah. Sorry. Just one last thing about this. See, because to, to, th th this is so key because to me, there's hatha yoga, diet, and good rest are three of the main ways to win your health one day at a time. Okay, and this is what you have to do. You have to win your health every single day with your habits. And th those three, doing a yoga practice, cooking mm. your good food, mm. and getting good rest, those are go a huge way to keeping you out of the hospital, yeah. out of the doctor's office out of um, taking pills and medicines and external things to try to feel better. Mm. And do you eat, I mean, like when's your main, I mean, like just a, on a, a logistics process, well, I'm thinking yeah. when, I mean, when are you eating? Are you, have you specific guidelines for like your meals or your meal times? Yeah, I generally eat about twice a day. Right. And once in the something pretty light in the 10 or a, a range 10 o'clock 11 o'clock right. and then the main food is probably around three or four right. i have and um the you that's, don't eat again. what's that you don't eat after that after three or four like yeah i mean i try okay but yeah that sometimes there's toast or something, you know, whatever. But I, I try to have that food in the late afternoon, early evening. Well, um, I, it's a crass question, but I'm sure I've been hanging out to ask anyway. What, what, was, your, what was your guilty pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> What's your deviation of, uh, of choice? You don't uh, have to. I mean, cookies. Um, and I, so today marks four weeks of no caffeine. Oh, wow. And I, would, I, I would not like to be around anyone, you know, with, with no caffeine. That, or no, they it's would, been hell. It's been, yeah. Yeah. Adam, it has been hell. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but I, and I was, I don't know, I was just not feeling good. And it was very much my go-to indulgence was the the espresso, and um, and it's super challenging still. Four weeks later, um, no, no tea, nothing. 
nothing. Nothing. Else. I have, I, and I'm potentially it will add in. I, I might go for a coffee. That that will be an indulgence um, that I will allow at some point. But That's what we can string you out when you do. It's yeah, really yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Hit you hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, um, that would be tough. And, um, also another tough, little you know. indulgence. So you know that I have those glass chai cup. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. The the I have brought it back, or someone actually gave me it um, from India. So once in a while, I have a, one of those little chai cups with the red wine. Right. That's an indulgence okay. for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's honest. Um, yeah, I wonder how the teaching. I mean, you're gonna, you know, you're you're gonna find it hard to, to you know, to to sustain your, your teaching without the coffee. That's, I know. Yeah, that's going to be. A, I know, a, but but I'm feeling better. That's the thing is I can't right. argue with the clear, results. Like, like, like so more steady and clear. I mean, definitely, I, it's um, it's amazing the difference, I, honestly. I, I, and, I, yeah, I have and I, I kind of wish like it wasn't any different, so I could just go, okay, well, I'll just go ahead and do it. But <laughs> no, it's better without it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. yeah. yeah. That's the trials of getting older as well. It's like I used to be able to drink five coffees, you know, no problem. And now I have one and it's like I'm a gibbering wreck, you know, no good for anything, you know. I know, right? It's, yeah, it's tough. Well, it's been really amazing having you and, and a lovely conversation I think we had. Well, I have anyway. Um, yeah, I've enjoyed it too. I, I, yeah, I think we'll I have to definitely do a part two. But for now, I'm going to sure. say hi to David. I'm, I guess, I mean, people, you know, uh, everyone knows where to find people these days. Just plug it into Google. So unless you want to say anything particular, uh, David, do you want to say anything about your, you know, anything coming up that, that people can look out for? Or, yeah, uh, I'm going to have a summer course this this summer on the actions in the asanas of the primary series. So you could look out for that. I'll be posting that pretty soon. Um, to be online. To be really interesting uh I, I do an annual summer course and this one's going to be about uh, actions in the asanas uh, uh, online course right yeah online or, or in person? online mm-hmm. online okay okay well that's that's going to go ahead then for sure <laughs> that's go ahead that's right <laughs> that sounds fantastic i may i may well be there well right. thanks very much for for joining me today i really really enjoyed it and uh, and yeah. look out for a part two with david as well so. all right Thanks very much, David. Bye-bye.